Yes, sir. What's up, you guys? So, as most of you know, tomorrow is opening day of Indiana spring turkey season. Tomorrow. I'm stressing out. I'm absolutely stressing out. I've never missed opening day of turkey season since I've been hunting turkeys. Um, but we got a big dilemma, okay? My wife works tonight. She works night shift, so that means she works from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And I have got two little rugrat boys. An almost one-year-old, and then an almost four-year-old. Say hi, Emmett. Hi. So, so, obviously, I can't wake up and get out to the woods at like 5.30 in the morning like I want to because I can't drop these kids off the babysitter until 6.50 in the morning. So... That's just a little bit too late for me to want to be in the woods. I want to be in there 45 to an hour before it gets sunrise. And I'm just stressing out. I'm in a predicament. What do I do? Do I... Or I could possibly reach out to the in-laws and see if we can uh, stay the night at their house so that... I can leave the kiddos there and they can wake up with the kiddos in the morning and I can leave at like 5 o'clock in the morning like I want to. Kiddos should still be sleeping when they start crying and wake up. Papa and Gigi will come and do their thing with them in the morning. But I just don't feel right about that. I've, I asked them for a lot and I'm sure they probably wouldn't care. But I don't know, I'm stressing out. Or I could still take them to the babysitter's normal time, 6.50 in the morning. And I can head straight to the woods after I drop them off. So it'll be like 7 o'clock by the time I get out to the woods and get set up. By that time, I'm sure some of these birds are already going to be blown off their roost in, in the timber. So I could probably try and do a little sneaking up on them like a, stock, like a spot and stock maybe. I've never done that before. Or I might get lucky and they're still up in their trees and their roost. So, I have got to go tomorrow. It is opening day. But I just don't know what, how to go about it. I'll be able to go, but will it be at the time that I want to go? An hour before sunrise, set up, ready to go, or getting in the woods a little late? So, help me through this, you guys. What do I do? Late start to the woods? Try to kill one more challenging way? Or do I see if the in-laws can do me a huge favor? So either way, I'm sure I'll let you know what I do in the morning. But um, good luck to everybody out there that's get, that's going in the morning or going tomorrow at all. I hope everybody has success. Uh, it's supposed to be a great morning. We got a little bit of rain uh, right now this evening. So that rain the night before, man. Rain the morning before, I just I love that. It's just a perfect situation for the birds to get dried off in the field and whatnot, and to be a little bit more active. So, I'll continue to sit here and stress about it and figure out what I want to do. So, are you pooping? Are you pooping? Daddy, I don't want to wash it. He's pooping, so I got to go. We'll see you guys in the morning. What's up you guys? It is opening day of turkey season here in Indiana. From what I told you last night, as you can see, that uh, I went with going in late. I just dropped the kids off at 6.50 right now, so I don't know how this is going to go. I'm a little nervous. We're heading to the property now, and it looks like a pretty cool morning. So I'm excited, you guys. Let's get our Indiana turkey here first thing on opening day. Shh, stay tuned. Alright, I'm just now walking in. Gonna come up here to this bottom and see if we can uh see if we can hear any gobbles.
All right, you guys, well, that was a big fail. Uh, I didn't hear a single gobble, didn't see a single bird. So I got out of there quick. I, don't, I didn't want to spend too much time. I want to go check this other property out real quick if I can. Uh, might be some out in the field. And um, see if we can still get it done this morning. All right, you guys, I got a bird that's strutting right out here in this field. Let's see if we can make a play on it. He's walking in the woods. I have to hurry up and get over there. Well, you guys just got back to the truck. I had uh, two toms hung up at about 60 yards. I first spot them, spotted them when I pulled up in the lane here and I creeped my way in. They're probably 300 yards away. I uh, creeped my way in all the way through the woods to try to sneak up on them closer. I kept getting closer and closer. They're still out there in the field doing their thing, not bothered by me or anything. Um, I come up to, like I said, about within 60 yards of them, and I get in some good cover. I sit there, I try to call a little bit, and um, the one kept strutting and fanning out and was looking towards my way and would take a couple steps and act like he was coming. So I'm like, all right, he's gonna come this way. And uh, he never would, he just got hung up, just kept going back and forth and just never would come any closer. Uh, and then eventually the two Tom just kind of worked away to, towards the corner of the woods and went in the timber so i wasn't going to keep chasing them save it for another day all right well we saw some birds out here so keep grinding we'll eventually get her done All right, you guys, we just spotted three toms over here at the farm. Uh, they're, they're just working their way out of the timber. Uh, they're out in the open of the field. I'm gonna try to get to the office, opposite side of the farm and see if I can't sneak in on them to the wood line that they're going to. All right, you guys, we're making our way out to the field here. Let's see if we can't put a play on them. Hopefully they didn't crust. I gotta get all the way over there in that wood line. Let me just kinda...
All right, so that did not go how I wanted it to go. I had to get to this woods over here. These turkeys, when I got over here, were already up at the middle of the field. So I figured I could stay below that ditch line without them seeing me. And when I got up here to the top, one of them birds saw me and they took off back to the woods that they came from. So I'm hoping that they'll just hang out in these woods and I'll give it a little bit. See if I can get set up in these woods and maybe call them back. So it's worth a try. I got all day. We are really running and gunning today, folks. So I get just inside of the next block woods, stop and listen for a bit, and then I proceed to let out a nice soft yelp on my pot call and immediately get a response from the tom back further in the woods. So this ensures my decision on chasing these birds back into the woods and that they are still in these woods. Okay, now I'm back in the ball game. I quickly walk another 40 to 50 yards and get set up in a little clearing. To me, this spot is perfect. I've got an open little spot where I can place my decoys out in front of me and I can be set up at the base of this tree with some down trees to my left, giving me some great cover. The plan was flawless. I sit and wait for a couple more minutes before I call again. I hit my call and the tom responds back. I give it another couple minutes and I hit it again. He responds back and seems to be making his way closer to my position. Now it's time to wait and be patient. After a good 20 to 30 minutes of patiently waiting and listening, the tom has gone quiet and I feel defeated once again. Did he spot me? Did I spook him when I was setting up the decoys? Is my calling terrible and not believable? A million other things running through my mind as to why this tom has all of a sudden stopped responding. As I'm about to give up and throw in the towel, the tom gobbles his head off to my left, right next to me. I slowly adjust my eyes as far left as I could without turning my head and spot him. He is right on top of me at 15 yards away. At the time, I only thought it was just him. As I'm waiting for him to appear out in front of me, five to six jakes come along and check out my decoys as the big tom hangs out in the back, still hidden behind some brush. As the jakes finally get done checking out my setup, I hear one more gobble from the big tom and see him appear from behind the brush, beelining it right towards my decoys. It's game time, baby. Sir, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, baby. Yes, sir, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, baby. Yes, sir. You guys, I'm just sitting here, just soaking this all in. Wow, that was absolutely awesome. I would, I don't know, I'm just, I'm shook up right now. I just got to sit here. I got my Tom dead, 20 yards up ahead of me, dead as can be. And I'm still just sitting here where I shot him at. I haven't even gone up and looked at him yet, but I'm just sitting here and just soaking it all in. And I, all morning, I've been trying to find birds, trying to hear birds. I cannot hear a gobble at all first thing this morning. Didn't see any birds out in the field like I thought they were going to be until I came to the last spot, our family farm, and came up here to the old farmhouse, and I saw three big birds coming out of this woods. I'm like, all right, and I got a little better look at them with my binos, and I saw that the one was a tom. I'm like, okay, we're in the game. They were working their way probably 200 yards across this field to go to the big timber. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go to the opposite side of the farm. I'm going to see if I can't sneak in and cut them off. So I get to the opposite end. I'm down in this low point of the field and creeping in. I'm creeping in. I've, I've got to make it to the 
to the point of this field where I'll be exposed out in the open. I'm like, I'm this far out, they ain't gonna see me. Well, sure enough, as soon as I pop over up onto that high point of the field, then birds pick me out from 400 yards away, take back off into this woods where they came out of. So I'm like, well, there goes my morning. I wasn't even gonna try. But I'm like, you know what? Why don't I go back into the woods where they came in, where they came out of, and where they got scared and ran back to. Let's just give them a bit, come back in here. You know, they surely don't know what the heck I was from that far. So I gave them a little bit. I walked all the way across the field, came back in this woods, got in the wood line, did a quick little two-pitch yelp. And sure enough, that tom started gobbling. So, whew, guys, this is awesome. I can't, sorry. So, I'm like, all right, I see a spot up on top of this little ridge, the highest point of this in this woods. I'm like, I'm going to set my decoys up there. Got really good cover here in front of me. And I'm going to start calling, see if I can't call him back up here. So I do that, and then I start calling. Nothing. He goes quiet. I'm like, dang it, did he see me when I was setting up the decoy? Because I was up pretty exposed again up on this point in the timber. I'm like, surely not. So I give a little bit, some time goes by, probably 30 minutes, nothing. I call here and there, nothing. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm packing it in. Just as I go to stand up and get my things in order, I hear a gobble and he's closer. I'm like, oh my God, yes. So I sit back down, get back into ready mode, call a little bit more and then I can see him out of the corner of my eye over here in the timber, probably 40 yards from me. He came this way that quick. So I'm like, all right. I got my decoys out in front of me. That bird is coming from over here to my left. So during the meantime, I do some little calls and he's still gobbling his head off. And then four Jakes come up to my decoys, check them out and they go on. I'm like, geez, a lot. there was at least seven Jakes that came up to these decoys. And I still got this Tom over here. He's just creeping his way in. Finally, he makes one more gobble 15 yards from me, loud as can be. And then I can see him moving through the brush. I'm like, all right, he's making his way. And he just beelined it right for these decoys. 17, 15 yard shot, smoked him, and he's dead. What an amazing hunt. That was a, a run and gun hunt. That's the first, my first experience with a hunt like this. I've always sat in the blind, got him right off the roost first thing in the, in the morning with a bow. And this year I wanted to use a shotgun to blow their head off. And, uh, kind of be in the timber just be exposed be outside of the blind and sure enough i made it happen this morning you guys i by far this has been my best season so far 2024 so freaking awesome you guys let's go up here and check this bird out i haven't even gone up in here and checked him out yet <laughs> Thank you. 